Welcome to worship. Before we begin our worship service, I would like to invite us to pray for our veterans as we celebrate Veterans Day on November 11th. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for the men and women who have served and defended our country and the values of freedom and justice we hold so dear. Help us be mindful of the sacrifices they made and the hardships endured by their families and friends so that we may never take for granted the privileges they have secured for us. Continually remind us to welcome and care for the veterans who are placed on the edges of society, particularly people who have experienced war and combat. We are called to love, serve, and welcome the strangers at our doors, not only by an official mandate of our church, but by Jesus Christ when he says, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Almighty God, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence to prepare ourselves for worship, to center ourselves in God's love and amazing grace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. And in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
first lesson for this morning is from Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. Woe to you who is long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a mad fled from a lion only to meet a bear. As though to, as he entered his house and rest his hand on the wall, only to have a snake bite him. Will it not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light? pitch dark, without a ray of brightness. I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you have a choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like a never-failing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 70. Hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, Aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your savings help always say, the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. The second lesson for this morning is from 1 Thessalonians Chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want to be, un to be uniformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring Jesus, those who have fallen asleep with him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you, that we are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This year's stewardship theme is Here I Am. For the next three Sundays, we will be dwelling in the word hearing Samuel's call and answer to God. And each week we will reflect on our own call. Where is God inviting us to use our spiritual gifts? We will hear a story on the theme of stewardship and how God is calling us to be generous stewards with all that God has given us. And we will hear from individuals as they give their testimony on where God has called them to use their spiritual gifts. These testimonies and stories will take place at my weekly sermon. I hope you will be inspired by the powerful words that are shared. A reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 through 12. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. 
And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak. For your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning this house from beginning to end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Where is God calling you? And will you respond? Here I am. Send me. Your servant is listening. A reflection on stewardship. The garden. There once was a woman who longed to have a flower garden. Each year she would visit her neighbor. who had the most beautiful garden she had ever seen and he would give her cuttings and seeds for her own garden. But when she would return home, she would change her mind at the last minute saying, but my neighbor's garden is so much lovelier than anything I could hope to grow. And he knows so much more about gardening. I could never hope to grow a garden half so lovely as that. Why should I even try? One day her neighbor stopped by her home and saw that she had not one flower growing anywhere around her house. I provided you with so much, he said, and yet you have done nothing at all with what I have given you. And so it is with each of us. The Lord gives us talents and expects us to develop them. We cannot judge our worth by comparing ourselves to others, but must bloom and grow the best we can with what we have been given. May each new day that dawns for you be an opportunity to use the gifts that God has given to be the best that you can be. I 
now invite us to listen to a personal testimony and how God has called each of us to use One of my father's legacies is my involvement in Emmanuel. When he moved in with me in 2012, he asked that I find him a church at which to worship weekly. He needed a driver too, so we began attending Emmanuel together. Much to my surprise, this reconnection to church after a 50 year lapse satisfied a spiritual need I didn't even know I had. I eventually joined Emmanuel and continued to attend regularly, even after Daddy's death in 2014. I still experience his warmth and comforting presence as I sit in our pew on Sunday mornings. When I first attended Emmanuel, I was still working and my time was short. Still, I wanted to contribute in a small way, so I occasionally provided baked goods and read the lessons. One Sunday, as I was rushing to prepare coffee and communion bread and my readings, Dad said, why do you have to do everything? I replied that plenty of other members were doing a whole lot more than I, but my commitments just happened to fall together on this particular day. I understood, however, that Dad's unspoken message was perhaps I was getting in over my head, just as I often do in other areas of my life. I wonder what he'd say if he could see me now. I learned early on that God blessed me with the gift of expression. I have always been a good communicator, and as time went on, members of Emmanuel encouraged me to share that ability. Someone asked me to run for counsel, and although I didn't feel competent, I agreed. Then someone asked me to serve as council vice president, and although I didn't feel competent, I agreed. Somehow the same road led me to the council presidency. Even though historically I have hated organized meetings, I enjoy our monthly gatherings. People also discovered that I'm a decent writer and editor. So someone and someone and someone asked if I might help create a history of a manual, a new cookbook and edit the newsletter. I admit that I might have been one of those someones and it didn't require a whole lot of arm twisting. I'm proud to have contributed to those written records of our church. Music is another avenue for me to express myself. Dad and I enjoyed band Sundays immensely. And I used to wonder how those talented musicians would feel about the invasion of an accordion amateur. The year after Dad died, I finally got up the nerve to ask Dave Kroll. And after my first night at practice, he turned to the others and said, well, I think we're adding an accordion to the band. Everybody agree? Now that must have made my dad smile. About the same time, one morning after service, Priscilla Johnson said, you have a good voice. Why aren't you in the choir? They need you. And just like that, I was trying to learn how to sing in a group. I quickly moved from the soprano and alto sections of women to the back row of men, and Kevin Kirby has been patiently teaching me how to be a tenor ever since. Every time I stand in front of the congregation in Sandy Letelier's too short choir robe, I wonder how in the world I ended up up front with real singers and why they let me stay. Nobody has told me to stop yet, so occasionally I get really brave and even try a solo. I don't sing well, but I sing joyously and from the heart, and I guess that's good enough. I've been a teacher for over 50 years. I just can't seem to get the hang of retiring, so when my Nicolet boss asked me if I would consider teaching prison inmates, I thought I would give it a go. After my Oneida County Jail orientation, I told her I was the wrong person for the job, that I couldn't treat students in the impersonal, distant way the jail expected. That's why I want you, she countered. Your approach is what inmates need. So once again, I thought I could at least try. Three years later, I feel I have arrived at a place that God has been leading me to my entire life. The work brings me both laughter and sorrow, and I am blessed to have this opportunity to give and take. 
There is much that I don't do well. Technology, diplomacy, mindfulness, and prayer are all areas where I fall short, and I'm working to improve. It will probably take the rest of my life. I am terrible at sewing, quilting, cleaning, decorating, gardening, building, repairing, painting, drawing, crafting, budgeting, and a myriad of other activities. I'm never going to be good at them, and I'm no longer trying, but that's okay. God gave those gifts to others. He gave me the ability to speak, to write, to sing, to play, and to teach. And so, in gratitude, I share those gifts. I urge you to, ins to discern your own unique gifts and use them wherever you can to make the world a better place for all of us. The answer to my dad's 2012 question to me is, you don't have to do everything, but you have an opportunity and talent to do something. Whatever your something is, will be enough.
believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, who in all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Each prayer will end. Hear us, O God, and our response is your mercy is great. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song and reflections on stewardship. Sustain the work of all church musicians, readers and volunteers who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists who work invites us into harmonious living your creation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law, and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
until the day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. A sacramental prayer. Until we can meet again as the whole body of Christ break the one bread and share the one cup, I invite us to pray this prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life that nourishes and sustains us. Since we cannot gather to share the bread and the cup, dwell in our hearts and reveal to us again that we are the body of Christ in our vulnerable flesh, through our baptism into your death and resurrection, and in service to the world you love. Be for us manna in the wilderness. Open our eyes to see you present in every meal and in all who hunger for bread, for human touch, for justice, for love, and for healing and hope. We pray in your holy name, our healer and our companion. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you rejoice, reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God the Father, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Beloved of God, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.